You're watching Zoo Tours, the channel that takes you on a virtual field trip to the zoo. For this episode of Zoo Tours, we'll be heading to a short but more than sweet look at Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo. There really isn't much to be said about this park more than I already have. I mean, I can only compliment a place so many times. Now that being said, we started off in the hemisphere's largest indoor desert, America's largest indoor rainforest, America's greatest zoo aquarium, and the aquatic theme will continue. Which brings us to the award-winning Sea Lion Shores. We'll get into all of the attraction's unique details along the way. But first, I want to get the comments going. So I want you to tell us, what is your favorite kind of animal show or presentation? Settled to the left of Expedition Madagascar and the Gorilla Valley is an open ravine. The entrance doesn't quite match the rest of the area's ambitious craft. I assume that was to retain the element of surprise. Sea Lion Shores began with a pool with a past. This is a photo of a community pool in Omaha's Riverview Park. From 1916 to the 1940s, it was open to the public before being abandoned. Roughly 30 years later, it was dug up and renovated for new patrons. Next to today's African grasslands, the Owen Sea Lion Pavilion hosted an 85 by 100 foot oval shaped pool. It looks like something that should have been abandoned as soon as it was built. But the barking lasted for 48 years. It lasted so long that even I was able to see it in 2020. Fortunately, that same year, the Bear Canyon was replaced by a $26.8 million sea lion rocky cove. Almost every one of these faces some sort of amphitheater. But Henry Dorley claims to be the very first zoo in North America to have what they call a pupping beach where mothers can raise their young and sort of get them used to the shallows before slowly introducing the pups to deeper waters. In the past, back at the pavilion, the zoo would have to drain the pool halfway for the pups, but at the shores, this beach can be fenced off and connected to the main area until the puppies are ready to take on a deeper challenge. The cove's rough waters makes up 275,000 gallons of salt water, chilled and heated, depending on the time of year, to guarantee maximum movement from the pinnipeds throughout most of the day. The rock work, in my opinion, is unmatched, and no other zoo in America comes close to this kind of realism. The only instance that I can think of that comes close is the zoo's very own rock work in the Asian highlands. Omaha achieved its goal by making everything look as natural as possible, even with the desert dome in the background. It wasn't just designed to look like nature, but to feel like nature as well. The wakes are not made from the animals swimming around, but from a large surge machine that produces waves between 4 to 12 feet tall. There's a total of six main viewing points that are all different in some way. Open view, glass view, netted, elevated, and I was just barely able to fit into the slightly hidden crawl through crevice that gives an underwater view of the pool's shallower side. The guest portion is just as impressive as the habitat itself. The observation path is further surrounded by over-towering cliffs, expanded by a giant welcoming sea arch, the largest faux rock structure in the entire zoo. The cliff also supports a lush headland forest a waterfall. It's scattered with fake barnacles and sea stars, a small sandy beach that encourages kids to play just as they would on a real beach. And there's even a prop eagle's nest to literally top it off. We saw two other major exhibits that represent the Pacific Northwest, but Omaha's is just about as realistic as it gets. With any exhibit ever, there's nothing better than having the whole complex to yourself. And that's especially true in the Flooded Cavern. A 40-foot-long, 17,000-pound window reveals the rest of the sea lion shore. To enhance the senses of a Pacific Ocean atmosphere, the zoo made the seafloor just as detailed as the elements on the surface. With sea stacks, fallen trees, and a kelp forest, 
The Cove hosts a moderate rookery of harbor seals who joined the shores a year after its debut. They swim peacefully with California sea lions, one of the many poster species to the Pacific Northwest that numbers in the hundreds of thousands, so they're not endangered on paper. But that doesn't mean they can't represent a conservational message. The guest path represents an intertidal zone, the point where the ocean meets the land, and its slow descent into this cavern represents a runoff. In other words, when rain or floods carry harmful chemicals and pesticides from farms or other households into rivers and creeks, which eventually drops into the ocean. The zoo's following sign then talks about dead zones. An excess amount of nutrients from waste in these fertilizers can cause overgrowth of algae and oxygen levels in the water to deplete, handing the wildlife in these dead zones a death sentence. So where do sea lions come into play? Well, not only would they lose some pretty viable options on their menu, but sometimes they'll get their teeth on fish that feed on this toxic algae, leading to gastrointestinal problems, seizures, and even permanent brain damage. Henry Dorley and any other zoo exclaims that your day-to-day -day choices can impact the health of our oceans. And they say it starts with reducing your use of plastics and completely refrain from using fertilizer. But having any sort of impulse to make a change starts when you achieve heart-to-heart -heart moments like these. I know it was short, but that will do it for another tour of Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo. And once again, we got to see how they go above and beyond with just about everything they do. Our next adventure in Nebraska will take place right across from these shores in the even more impressive Asian Highlands. I'd like to take this moment to thank the channel members for keeping these tours rolling. But if you also want to help in some way, I recommend going to my very own Zoo Crew gift shop, where there's always a sale going on. Or you can find out how you can track one of these wild animals with just the purchase of a discounted bracelet. Links are in the comments. So please stay tuned. See if you all can answer this episode's trivia question. And thank you all for watching Zoo Tours.